Hi, Dr. Pelto here. How are you doing? Um, I'm going to pull up some slides here to go over some of the main questions that we had this, uh, this last week with patients here. So here are the questions, okay? Um, once again, uh, I am Dr. Pelto. I answer my questions that people send me. I'll show you how you can do that at the end, or you can just comment on one of the videos, and then I'll answer a lot of the questions. I'll, first to start out, this is not considered medical uh, treatment. You are not my patient, and uh, I'm just kind of helping uh, field some of these questions that people have. So I have severe flat foot in one of the foot and a foot and a high arch in the other. I have severe chronic ankle instability and pain in both feet. I have been wearing regular insert orthotics and have tried both over-the-counter and custom ones, but they don't provide enough support. I've been thinking about getting an AFO. AFO is an ankle foot orthotic uh, instead uh, because they would be able to not allow my ankle and arch to roll in because the brace would go above my ankle. Uh, she watched, uh, this patient watched one of my videos on AFOs, and I believe that some of my ankle pain is in one ankle is due to my flat feet slash high arch problem. What would you recommend? I'm young and and would a rigid or uh, hinged AFO would be better. Once again, if you're young, we try not to do these in young people just because most people won't wear them when they're young. But if you have a high arched and a flat foot, I do these more for a flat foot than I do high arched. So potentially just doing one AFO. Um, the high arch, it depends if that hurts or not. I'm gonna go over some examples. The difference, uh, once again, this is a flat foot. Everything kind of collapses in at the ankle. That's why you need something that goes above the ankle. Uh, there's two different types. There's a, this little hinge right here you can see, and this is a non-hinged device. The hinged moves at the ankle joint. So if you have good ankle joint movement, it's better to do a hinged one because it can continue to move and give you the support that you need. If you have really bad ankle arthritis, you could do the non-hinged one. So that's, that's kind of the idea between the AFOs. AFOs work great. You can go to your podiatrist and, and they can make them for you. Question, what does cortisone do inside the joints? This person watched a video on cortisone injections. They're done in different places. Um, if they're done in the joint, um, you, you don't want to do too many of them. Uh, usually we do three maybe a year, but in podiatry, it's not maybe like uh, other orthopedic specialties where they do them three forever until they're ready to do surgery. I don't usually do more than two or three uh, because it can harm the joint or someone might just have so much pain, they may need um, a, another type of a surgery. But what it does inside is it reduces the inflammation. But if you have really bad arthritis, it, it it could come back. Also, it can cause some joint damage too. It can, there can be risks of infection and other things like that. So that's some information about cortisone. Hope that answers your question. Uh, another question from a patient. I, I happened to develop nail fungus well over 12 years ago. It comes back every year. Once again, nail fungus doesn't come back every year. So it probably was either never treated or you might not have nail fungus. So I would start out by getting a nail sample to determine that. And for 10 years, I've been taking Lamisil. It would always clear up perfectly and allow me to be able to wear my sandals and my toes were beautifully polished. So Lamisil, I, I agree. I think it works great. Um, you may need it for three months or a little bit longer. You should test your liver if there's any concerns there. It does take a whole year to grow out, uh, but it doesn't usually come back. It, incomplete cure is more common. Um, I've noticed that I use a special polish that keeps the fungus away. There are polishes that have antifungal properties you may want to consider. And um, I've been doing this for about two years. My toes look nice and, and things like that. So once again, nail fungus uh, doesn't tend to come back. So you should get a nail sample. That's what I'm saying. Uh, another question from a patient. Uh, they uh, called the office, wanted to come in sooner. Redness around the nail edge after a procedure called a matrixectomy. This is normal. This is normal after you kill the nail root. And there's swelling, there's blistering, there's redness. This is all normal. If the redness goes up the foot, it's not normal. But this type of redness is not an infection. This is after a nail procedure, one of the ones where you put the acid in the nail base. We, we use sodium hydroxide in our office. And then the final question, um, there's a patient, uh, if they have pain to the front of the foot that's not getting better, get an x-ray uh, or an MRI, uh, but x-ray to start. This patient, they had foot pain in the front for a long time, didn't get better, and they ended up having this problem. It's called an avascular necrosis, which is a squaring of the, of the metatarsal head. And there are different treatments. You should talk to your doctor about this. But getting an x-ray is really the best thing for you. Okay. Oh, there is one more. This is kind of interesting thing. This patient had the nail actually removed, or I think it fell off because it got injured. And as it's growing back, it starts to hurt in the edge. And this is what I wanted to show you guys a little bit something. It's hard because this nail kind of grows, uh, grows up here, and it hurts right in here. So an idea, if you think about it, if, if here's a nail, okay, that's a really bad drawing. But if you have a nail right here, this nail is holding down the skin. 
when that nail comes off, what tends to happen is the pulp of the skin kind of, that's exaggerated, but the pulp of the skin grows up. And then as the new nail grows out, it hits right there. So there, you can sometimes use like a urea nail gel, like a, a nail gel to soften the nail. Um, you can try to trim it. You can try to pull down, pull down the skin. And then in the really, really bad cases, you can sometimes take out a piece of the skin and just flap that down to pull down that skin. So that uh, some ideas for you. Hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, you can um, go to drpelto.com and there's a place where you can ask me questions. You can also comment on, on the videos or ask questions underneath. And I'm trying to answer them once a week. When you go to Dr. Pelto, you put your email and, and uh, name in there and then you put the question in and then I'll just address it. You pick the date that you want it answered and, I'll, and, uh, and you can just look at the video that comes up that day. Okay, I hope this was helpful uh, and thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.